The Kutta-Joukovsky theorem is a fundamental theorem of aerodynamics that can be used for the calculation of the lift of an airfoil, or of any two-dimensional bodies including circular cylinders. Translating in a uniform fluid at a constant speed large enough so that the flow seen in the body fixed frame is steady and unseparated. The theorem relates the lift generated by an airfoil to the speed of the airfoil through the fluid, the density of the fluid, and the circulation. The circulation is defined as the line integral around a closed loop enclosing the airfoil of the component of the velocity of the fluid tangent to the loop. It is named after the German Martin Wilhelm Kutter and the Russian Nikolai Zhukovsky who first developed its key ideas in the early 20th century. kutter zhukovsky theorem is an inviscid theory which for pressure and lift is however a good approximation to real viscous flow for typical aerodynamic applications. kutter zhukovsky theorem relates lift to circulation, much like the Magnus effect relates side force to rotation. However, circulation here is not induced by rotation of the airfoil but by some intrinsic mechanism described below. Due to this circulation, the flow of air in response to the presence of the airfoil can be treated as the superposition of a translational flow and a rotating flow. This rotating flow is induced by joint effective camber, angle of attack and sharp trailing edge of the airfoil and should not be confused with a vortex like a tornado encircling the cylinder or the wing of an airplane in flight. Seen from a distance large enough to the airfoil, this rotating flow may be regarded as induced by a line vortex. In the derivation of the kutta joukovsky theorem the airfoil is usually mapped into a circular cylinder. This theorem is proved in many textbooks only for circular cylinder and Joukovsky airfoil, but it holds true for general airfoils. Lift force formula The theorem refers to two-dimensional flow around an airfoil and determines the lift generated by one unit of span. When the circulation is known, the lift per unit span of the airfoil can be calculated using the following equation. Wherein are the fluid density and the fluid velocity far upstream of the airfoil which is now regarded fix on a body fixed frame? and is the circulation defined as the line integral around a closed contour enclosing the cylinder or airfoil and followed in the positive direction. This path must be in a region of potential flow and not in the boundary layer of the cylinder. The integrand is the component of the local fluid velocity in the direction tangent to the curve and is an infinitesimal length on the curve. Equation is a form of the kutta joukovsky theorem. Kothi and Schetzer state the kutta joukovsky theorem as follows. The force per unit length acting on a right cylinder of any cross-section whatsoever is equal to, and is perpendicular to the direction of in using the kutter joukovsky theorem. Caution should be paid on circulation. Circulation and cutter condition. A lift producing airfoil either has camber or is translating in a uniform fluid at an angle of attack. Moreover, it must have a sharp trailing edge. To design a lift-producing airfoil we certainly have borrowed much from bird wings since bird wings have section or airfoils with sharp trailing edge, with camber and moving in air at some angle of attack. Any real flow is viscous and the fluid velocity vanishes on the airfoil so we should have a vanishing circulation if we treat the fluid as viscous and if the loop is chosen as the contour of the airfoil. Moreover, fluids moving along the lower and upper surfaces of the airfoil should meet at the sharp trailing edge since viscous dissipation prevents the fluid to turn round the sharp edge. This is known as the cutter condition for real flow. Prantiel discovered that when the Reynolds number, defined as, is large enough and the angle of attack is small enough, then the flow around a thin enough airfoil is composed of a narrow viscous region called boundary layer near the body and an inviscid flow region outside. Kutter and Joukovsky discovered that for computing the pressure and lift of a thin enough airfoil for flow with large enough Reynolds number and at small enough angle of attack, the flow can be assumed inviscid in the entire region, provided the cutter condition is imposed. This is known as the potential flow theory that works remarkably well in practice. 
imposing the cutter condition at the inviscid case is equivalent to giving a circulation. In summary, a bird wing-like airfoil naturally produces lift and the flow in flight condition meets the cutter condition. When using the potential flow theory, requiring cutter condition to be satisfied at flight condition yields a circulation required by applying the cutter dukowski theorem that gives a lift force very close to that of the real flight. Derivation. Two derivations are presented below. The first is a heuristic argument based on physical insight. The second is a formal and technical one, requiring basic vector analysis and complex analysis. Heuristic argument for a rather heuristic argument. Consider a thin airfoil of cord in infinite span, moving through air of density. Let the airfoil be inclined to the oncoming flow to produce an airspeed on one side of the airfoil, and an airspeed on the other side. The circulation is then the difference in pressure between the two sides of the airfoil can be found by applying Bernoulli's equation. So the lift force per unit span is a differential version of this theorem applies on each element of the plate and is the basis of thin airfoil theory. Formal derivation lift forces for more complex situations. The lift predicted by cutter dukowski theorem within the framework of inviscid potential flow theory is quite accurate even for real viscous flow, provided the flow is steady and unseparated. A cutter dukowski theorem for steadier rotational flow. In deriving the cutter dukowski theorem, the assumption of a rotational flow was used. When there are free vortices outside of the body, as may be the case for a large number of unsteady flows, the flow is rotational. When the flow is rotational, more complicated theories should be used to derive the lift forces. Below are several important examples. b. Impulsively started flow at small angle of attack. For an impulsively started flow such as obtained by suddenly accelerating an airfoil or setting an angle of attack. There is a vortex sheet continuously shed at the trailing edge and the lift force is unsteady or time dependent. For small angle of attack starting flow, the vortex sheet follows a planar path, and the curve of the lift coefficient his function of time is given by the Wagner function. In this case the initial lift is one half of the final lift given by the cutter dukowski formula. The lift attains 90% of its steady state value when the wing has traveled a distance equal to 7 cord lengths. c. Impulsively started flow at large angle of attack. The lift drops for a very short time period before the usually assumed monotonically increasing lift curve is reached. d. Starting flow at large angle of attack for wings with sharp leading edges. If, as for a flat plate, the leading edge is also sharp, then vortices also shared at the leading edge and the role of leading edge vortices is twofold their lift increasing when they are still close to the leading edge, so that they elevate the Wagner lift curve, they are detrimental to lift when they are convected to the trailing edge, inducing a new trailing edge vortex spiral moving in the lift decreasing direction. For this type of flow a vortex force line map can be used to understand the effect of the different vortices in a variety of situations and may be used to improve vortex control to enhance or reduce the lift. The vortex force line map is a two-dimensional map on which vortex force lines are displayed. For a vortex at any point in the flow, its lift contribution is proportional to its speed, its circulation and the cosine of the angle between the streamline and the vortex force line. Hence the vortex force line map clearly shows whether a given vortex is lift producing or lift detrimental. E. Lagerly theorem. When a source is fixed outside the body. A force correction due to this source can be expressed as the product of the strength of outside source and the induced velocity at this source by all the causes except this source. This is known as the Lagerly theorem. For two-dimensional inviscid flow, the classical cutter dukowski theorem predicts a zero drag. When, however, there is vortex outside the body, there is a vortex-induced drag in a form similar to the induced lift. F. Generalize Lagerly theorem. 
for free vortices and other bodies outside one body without bound vorticity and without vortex production, a generalized Lagley theorem holds, with which the forces are expressed as the products of strength of inner singularities and the induced velocity at these singularities by all causes, except those inside this body. The contribution due to each inner singularity sums up to give the total force. The motion of outside singularities also contributes to forces, and the force component due to this contribution is proportional to the speed of the singularity, g individual force of each body for multiple body rotational flow, when in addition to multiple free vortices and multiple bodies, there are bound vortices and vortex production on the body surface. The generalized Lagerle theorem still holds, but a force due to vortex production exists. This vortex production force is proportional to the vortex production rate and the distance between the vortex pair in production. With this approach, an explicit and algebraic force formula, taking into account of all causes holds individually for each body with the role of other bodies represented by additional singularities. Hence a force decomposition according to bodies is possible. H. General three-dimensional viscous flow. For general three-dimensional, viscous and unsteady flow, force formulas are expressed in integral forms. The volume integration of certain flow quantities, such as vorticity moments, is related to forces. Various forms of integral approach are now available for unbounded domain and for artificially truncated domain. The Kutta-Joukowsky theorem can be recovered from these approaches when applied to a two-dimensional airfoil and when the flow is steady and unseparated. I. Lifting line theory for wings, wingtip vortices and induced drag. A wing has a finite span, and the circulation at any section of the wing varies with the spanwise direction. These streamwise vortices merge to two counter-rotating strong spirals, called wingtip vortices, separated by distance close to the wingspan and may be visible if the sky is cloudy. Treating the trailing vortices as a series of semi-infinite straight-line vortices leads to the well-known lifting line theory. By this theory, the wing has a lift force smaller than that predicted by a purely two-dimensional theory using the cutter joukowsky theorem. Most importantly, there is an induced drag. This induced drag is a pressure drag which has nothing to do with frictional drag. 